Welcome to the Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goodykant, Superintendent of Schools. Recently, the Needham School Committee approved three goal statements based on four core values that are the very foundation for all of our work with students in the Needham Schools. This is the first of three cable programs filmed in the new Needham High School television studio that will focus on each goal statement and provide information and context for each goal and the work ahead for the district and the school community. Joining me for today's discussion are George Johnson, Director of Student Development, Angie Morrison, a second grade teacher at Broadmeadow, and Glenn Brand, the principal of the Pollard Middle School. Welcome and thanks for joining me here today. Perhaps we, be we can begin our discussion with an overview of the district's four core values. We decided as a uh, school community that we would focus on four core values. They are scholarship, community, citizenship, and personal growth. These four core values really, uh, the, the district believes with conversations among teachers and staff are, are really at the heart of what we do and, and are fundamental to all of our work. Based on those core values over the last uh, several months, all of you were involved along with several teachers and parents and community members we established three goals. Uh, this again is the first of our conversation, advance standards-based learning, develop the social and emotional skills of all students, and to promote active citizenship. Today's conversation really is to focus on uh, the second goal. And, and the second goal, develop the social and emotional skills of all students, really is a, a, uh, a continuation of a goal that the Needham Public Schools has had for years. Um, I'm going to ask George Johnson perhaps to to fill us in on, on what exactly is social and emotional learning in the Needham schools. Uh, social and emotional learning is, is really the um, skills that kids need to manage major life tasks. It's the interpersonal and intrapersonal skills that they use in relationships and work and in learning. And we feel that it's important to focus on these for a couple of major reasons. The first is that they, it really improves learning. Uh, when kids have these skills, they have better attitudes in school, they're more motivated to work and, and to do well. Uh, their behaviors improve, they participate more in class, and they are, um, study habits are, are, are improved uh, as, as a result. And lastly, there's really a lot of good research out there that shows that by having these kids' skills, these kids have these skills, they do better in school. They, they uh, have better mastery of learning and, and uh, actually do better. The, the second major reason is, is that it enhances protective factors. Um, we know that students don't always make the right decisions in their life and the research tells us that the best way to help them with issues of, of drinking and drugs and depression and, and stress are to give them the kind of skills that they need in order to make healthy and good decisions. Uh, in, in fact, six or seven years ago when we began this work, it was really as a result of some information that we got from the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Yeah, we have some information about some of that, uh, some of that data. Right. Um, it, it, what it was showing is that um, kids were drinking more than we wanted them to be able to, to than we would like for them to drink. We would like for them to drink at all, actually. Uh, but what, what we found is that, is that those rates were high and that they were going up. And so we did some research, and, and what the research tells us is that if we can help kids develop skills, that they are much more likely to, to keep themselves safe and not to participate in these kind of behaviors. So it, you can see in, in some of the trends that uh, since we began this work um, in 2001, the, the trends have actually gone down. Um, we went from 53% of the kids who were drinking um, recently to 43% and binge drinking has also gone down. So the numbers are still higher than we like, but they're heading in the right direction and, and we believe in part it's as a result of this work. Well, there's no question it has to be a sustained effort, which is why it's still it's surfacing as a, a significant goal for the Needham schools. It just really can't go away. It's that important. Mm -hmm. The the other issue has to do with uh, another protective factor is school attachment and, and adult support. And we know that when students feel attached to other students and when they feel connected to adults in school, they're much more likely to, to feel safe and, and to keep themselves safe. Uh, so that uh, we are, are working hard to try to form those connections. Glenn will talk later about uh, some stuff that we're trying to do with, at the middle school, but we're trying to do that at all levels. What, 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 what 
at the at the uh, high school level, as you this data uh, reflects some older students and some of their behavior. What are what are some of the uh, uh, the numbers telling us here in this particular slide? It see, shows that 60% uh, of students uh, believe that they have at least one teacher or adult to talk to. What are, what are some of the the, uh, the structures in the high school, and maybe Glenn can talk about the middle school that are that are happening. At, at the high school, we've been focusing a lot on the mentor homeroom program, which is to have students be with the same students as well as teacher for the years that they're in the high school and to use that as an opportunity for them to develop connections with their peers as well as with an adult. Um, that work is still continuing and, and we need to, to put some more focus on it, but, but that's really one of the structures that we're putting a lot of emphasis on. Glenn, and at the middle school, what, what uh, I know that you're involved in, in trying to work on an advisory. Well, how is that taking we, shape? We are. I, you know, the first part of, I think, the the, the essence of the question of the middle school right now is that we do have the cluster system in place, and that is uh, it, that is certainly a, a, a keystone of, of what I have learned that Pollard is about, and it, it enhances those connections with adults. Although yet in that data it shows that um, there's still a number of seventh and eighth grade students who don't who don't feel a particular connection to any one individual adult. Although I think the cluster system is a very strong system that's alive and well. We are we are looking to in effect enhance uh, the cluster system. Uh, and that enhancement will uh, hopefully take shape and form through a uh, student advisory program that we're looking to uh, uh, hopefully launch uh, in September of the 2008 school year. And in essence, that will uh, effectively put into place a structure so that a smaller group of students can truly get to know one adult uh, in the building and that those connections and those relationships will hopefully uh, further support much of the research that's out there and, and much of the good, um, the good aspects of organizing schools in that form to support students in and around these areas. So it's, is it fair to say, uh, George, that, that SEL reduces risk of behavior and it helps improve uh, resiliency? That's where, that's, that's where we're headed. That's what we've been doing. That's where we're headed. And learning. And learning. Let's not forget that. No, nope, absolutely. And I, as, as part of that, the district has already uh, begun work and has actually implemented different competencies, K, uh, K through 12. What, uh, what, what does that look like and what are some examples? Well, the first thing that we actually did was to sit down and try to determine what it is that we wanted uh, our students to know and to be able to do. And so we identified those skills and we described what they look like at all levels so that we can t say what they look like at preschool, what they look like in, in elementary school, middle school, and high school. Uh, and just to give an example uh, around decision making, which is one of the three areas that, that we're focusing on, we, we start off by just having kids be aware of choices in their life uh, because younger kids seem to think that there's just one way to do things and so you, you get them first to, to realize that there's there's choices in life and then you get them to gradually be able to evaluate those choices to, to brainstorm many different types of, of ways that they could respond to something to be able to evaluate that and, and their evaluation gets more sophisticated as, as they grow older and, and have, have more skills and then finally we get them to try to be creative and, and to think about other ways of solving problems so that it's, it's just not a routine kind of way. So as kids go through school, we start and each year we extend the skills, we spiral the skills, we help them practice and, and we extend the skills so that it becomes more sophisticated. And I think what you're suggesting is that there are different, <coughs> different layers of, of SEL throughout the school system. And what, what Briefly, if you can describe those. Really, in order to teach skills, there's sort of three major components that you need to think about. First is the kids need to be taught the skills directly. Uh, there needs to be direct instruction of the skills. But there also needs to be uh, structures and routines in place so that the kids have opportunities to practice the skills in school and so that they can get feedback and reinforcement about those skills. So once you have the, all of that in place, you also need a culture. And, and the school culture is very important so that the adults are modeling, mod, modeling those skills and so that uh, students also have a, a safe place in which to practice and, and feel that they can, can use these skills. There's no question that school culture research shows this and, and certainly I think our collective experiences uh, that school culture is a, is a key and fundamental factor in, in student uh, connection and growth and, and, and learning. I know that within our goals there, there is an objective to address and at least assess the school culture at mm -hmm. each level to see where we are and, and try to make some, some progress and growth in, in that area. Yeah, Angie, uh, for, for years you've been involved in uh, trying to establish that culture within your classroom and within the Newman and the Broadman, uh, Broadmeadow communities. Uh, what, what does SEL look like at, at the elementary <coughs> level? 
Well, just like, you know, just like when we heard about what it looks like at the other levels, you know, the direct skill practice needs to be there, and also the culture of the school and the classroom needs to support that, those skill lessons that are taught through second step or through other, other ways that teachers directly teach social skills and practice them. Um, we've, many of the teachers um, in Needham have been trained in responsive classroom, which is, um, it's a way of teaching and learning that believes that social and academic learning go hand in hand. So just like they said before, that um, it enhances your academic learning, we use these different classroom practices like morning meeting and creating rules together and modeling for our students how we want them to use materials um, to help be proactive in letting children have an opportunity to try out these things that they've learned about decision making, um, try out you know, their ways of solving problems so that their risky behaviors in elementary school are declined. Um, we've seen through work with recess, we've seen lots of um, decline in bullying at recess, we've seen less injuries in the nurse's office, things like that. So we see a lot of things working together to make um, this opportunity for children to practice all of these things that we're teaching them. What is, uh, I, I've seen it, but perhaps it'd be helpful for parents in the community to know, what is morning meeting? Uh, so many of our children, I've attended so many of these uh, sessions. Uh, what is it, what happens? During morning meeting, um, children come together in a circle and greet each other, and then there's a sharing component that comes next where children are, uh, in different ways, asked to share about themselves and about their learning, um, responding with questions and comments. It's a time for children to have that basic need of belonging, significance, and fun met in a quick 20 minutes every morning. Um, it's a, a way that children believe that this is the routine that happens every day and I can count on this um, to start my day in the best way. After sharing, um, children engage in some sort of group activity. It might be a song or a game or some other way of them having a collective sense of, of working together. And then the end of the day, it, or the end of the meeting is where we t talk about the morning message and that jump starts the academic learning for the day. It might be telling children what, um, what will be coming for that day or it might be reinforcing or reminding about a skill that was taught the day before. And I, I've, uh, I've noticed in, in morning meeting, uh, the ones that I've, I've participated in, uh, academic skills are often tied into the message that's written on the, on the chart paper or on the whiteboard yeah. where uh, whether it's the temperature <laughs> outside or a spelling mistake in the message. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, so that reinforces uh, the academic uh, program as well. Absolutely, and throughout the morning meeting, academics are infused in the greetings. Oftentimes, are one, some greetings are things like, I'll have a card that says 2 plus 2, and you'll have a card that says 4, and I need to find the person to greet that has the answer to my addition Great. number sentence. So, you know, uh, academics are weaved throughout the entire morning meeting, so it gives that balance of um, social and academic learning going hand in hand. And so, um, you know, children are in the sharing, it can be an academic sharing. For instance, in my classroom this week, my students have been learning about um, the community animals of Needham, and they've been doing research on, on that. And so during sharing, they might meet with another person who learned about a different animal and share their information with each other. So sharing can be social and community news, or it can be academic things that they're learning um, in class together. As I understand it, and I think this is particularly exciting because I, I believe a lot in empowering young people to, to be guided in making decisions and ultimately, and this is the point of, of social emotional learning, helping students develop the skills to make good and healthy decisions, as George was mentioning, part of the component of responsive classroom is, is uh, it's helping decide on rules. What does that look like in your classroom? You start off with asking children um, to think about what their goals are for the school year or their hopes and dreams for the year. And you talk about what you might be doing in second grade or third grade or fifth grade um, and give them some ideas so that their goals and, and dreams are realistic. And then after they've created you know, these goals for the year, we know that setting goals and then having some in ownership of working through the goals and then um, evaluating them at the end is sort of the cycle of learning that is the best practice for all learning and it works with social and emotional learning as well. Um, so students will make their goals for the year. We'll talk about if everyone's goals are going to come true this year, what are some things that we need from each other? How do we want our class to be? And then students will list all their ideas for, for what they should have and then you work together to sort of mold them together into three or four um, general guidelines for behavior together. So it might be something like take care of each other, take care of our materials, um, take care of yourself, 
um, and you know have fun learning together. <coughs> so something like that. I you know I, I see the thread, the common thread between morning meeting and and middle school advisory and high school homeroom. There's there's a common thread that we're we're trying to make part of the culture, which is so key, and and the structure, which is important. Just to wish it to happen. Uh, it really won't. It can't be sustained. There has to be part of the, the structure that, that supports it. Uh, Glenn, perhaps you can, you can uh, share at the, at the middle school level, what are, what are some of the uh, components of, of uh, SEL and, and what you're trying to do or hope, hope to do? Well, as, as was mentioned earlier, there's, there really are, we are approaching this through, through really three <coughs> tiers. Uh, and, and those three, three prongs or tiers um, include, of course, the, the culture that we're, we're trying to look at. Um, and as mentioned earlier, the student advisory program, we think, is going to uh, be able to put us in a, in a position to further enhance what I think is already a very strong, uh, strong culture. Um, throughout the building, although we are a large school, uh, not unlike the high school, as was mentioned uh, at the elementary school, there are so many teachers who have, uh, who have taken the response of classroom training. That is also the case uh, at, uh, at Pollard. And uh, I've uh, been impressed from day one in terms of the overall commitment by the people who work in our, in our school uh, to ensure that that social emotional component is, is equally as important as is the, uh, as is the academic piece. And um, so that level of training and that level of knowledge and competency, I think, allow um, every adult who comes into our building to be aware of that and continually work on that. Um, in a formalized way, as mentioned, that student advisory program, we hope, will, will really just uh, define that to an even greater level. As part of that culture, we have a strong after-school program. Uh, the, the PAUSE program, as it's referred to, or the Pollard After School program, is, is, uh, is a program that's been alive and well for a number of years. It's organized through uh, the Needham Public Schools and community education. And uh, right now, for example, we have 29 activities that take place over the course of the afternoons of Monday to Thursday, engaging hundreds of students in, in a variety of activities. Um, there are activities that students get to choose. Uh, they um, uh, complement, I think, our overall goals by trying to build a sense of community. And uh, by that, I mean that in these activities, there are students from all three grades who come together, who may not know each other at the beginning of the activity, but are pursuing a common interest. Uh, it's a very successful program and um, the reviews by both parents and, and students and teachers alike um, further underscore that this is something that, that's working well and it's supporting our overall culture. The other two areas certainly um, include the, um, the structures that we have and, and I mentioned earlier the cluster. Um, that cluster system where we have about 85 students uh, who work very closely on a daily basis with four uh, core cluster teachers who over the course of the year truly get to know those students uh, in, and um, that's supported through uh, some scheduling means whereby there's, uh, there's uh, even greater time at various parts throughout the week uh, when those four cluster teachers truly get a sense of the students that they, um, they hold responsibility over. And as I have, have certainly learned uh, throughout the course of last year, those cluster, those cluster teachers, those clusters take on ownership of those students in a way that, that supports them beyond just learning uh, how to write a paragraph or how to compose an essay, but it's something that's much more broader than that. And, and as again is supported through the district's, the district's mission around social emotional learning. Um, the skill building component is, is an equal component in terms of Pollard's overall uh, efforts to uh, ensure that we have a, a, an SEL component that's alive and well at Pollard. There are really a number of areas that, that through the skill building we try and expose students to. Uh, we have a, a very strong and active guidance department. Uh, we have uh, five, five and a half uh, guidance counselors all, all together and they work closely with uh, each of the clusters and each of the grade levels. And they deliver over the course of a student's uh, three years with us at Pollard a number of, of in-class sessions that specifically target skills. For example, at the sixth grade team building is a component that uh, it has a parallel with the Camp Sergeant program that we run, but that guidance, um, the, the guidance department uh, delivers that program uh, with a set of skills to students at the sixth grade, the seventh grade harassment is another theme and rumors is something else that they work with students at the seventh grade to try and develop the the skills and competencies in terms of how to best deal with those and at the eighth grade sexual harassment and relationships something that uh, is uh, uh, as we see students grow and, and develop uh, socially and emotionally uh, themes that start to crop up more at that age level in addition to the guidance component um, we, we have a health program that is part of a, the overall district's wellness program uh, and that um, uh, all of our students are involved in, in that program and that also tries to underscore skills that are important for students of this age. Our overall theme I think is key for that program and that is uh, responsive, uh, responsibility, respect and, and resourcefulness. 
And I think that those, those are the themes that, that uh, crop up in, in some of the research around uh, social emotional learning and what that provides students. And um, certainly through the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade program, our health program, there are a number of, um, there are a number of themes or topics that are addressed that um, all together collectively build for hopefully what will be a skill set to allow a student um, to, uh, to, to effectively not only undertake their academic programs but also be a valuable member of the community uh, in a way that, that's uh, meaningful and, and rich and, and uh, we're hopeful that these things together will, um, will certainly help do that. Well, and I, I think one of the uh, key components that you've been working on, I think even recently, is the, the structure of advisory and, and how that will fit into the day. I know you have a, a team of folks addressing that and, we, and we, looking into that. We, we do. We, um, uh, we, we have a, uh, a team of volunteers that have come together. We've committed a, a considerable amount of time to uh, allow them uh, to be thoughtful and planful in terms of developing a program that will best fit Pollard. The um, student advisory programs have been alive and well throughout uh, North America for some time. They're, they're not new. Um, it would be a new it would be a new entity to Pollard uh, but we want to be sure that the program that we're going to put into place uh, fits with um, what our goals are fits with a structure that that uh, that we can support um, and then furthermore uh, before we embark upon this uh, make sure that the uh, the uh, faculty and staff who are going to be responsible for rolling this out have the training uh, and the uh, professional development to ensure that when we um, when we do offer this program, we'll be in a good position to start from day well, one. Well, and it certainly will involve training and also a little extra time. I know that we're, we're talking to the middle school staff right, right now about how right. we might be able to and how we might have to expand the, the day a right. little bit sure. and uh, have students start uh, a little earlier or, or end a little later just so that we have sufficient time to, to introduce right. this advisory program. Right. It also seems to me it will be key, particularly as High Rock comes online and we think about our sixth grade center, to really make sure that we have developed stru a structure to really support students. So as they leave morning meeting at the elementary level, they come in and transition into High Rock, they are equally supported at a very different level, and then they have a transition to the middle school and are supported as well. Those structures, I think, and that school culture will, will become even more important as, as we move we forward. Agree more. Not, not, not less. Um, George, at the high school level, some of the initiatives and, and planning that's going on. I, well, I mentioned earlier the, the homeroom initiative, <coughs> which is similar to the advisory program at, at Pollard that we hope to, to continue and beef up at, at the high school. But we also teach kids directly the skills at the high school as well. And some of that's done through curriculum infusion. So that in discussing literature, you might learn a skill uh, that, that is a very important. Or in a science class, uh, we teach kids to collaborate and cooperate um, as with lab partners. So some of it happens just through the regular class. But also, uh, similar to, to Pollard, we have um, the health curriculum that, that we use where a lot of skilled instruction happens. And in the last couple of years, we've added two new components to that, uh, the teenage health teaching modules, which are actual skill development um, ways of, of teaching kids, as well as the suicide prevention curriculum um, that, that we are now offering at all grade levels. And um, we're also looking at, at other ways of, of getting kids involved in, in helping teach kids and, and running orientation programs and, and that sort of thing because uh, kids can develop leadership skills and, and can um, also develop uh, social skills by working with each other so that, that's a that's a big emphasis and there's been a lot of talk at the high school about resiliency as well as managing stress and, and all of that's related as well. George, you have a unique perspective of having been in the district for a while, but also looking at the program pre-K through 12. And if, if, I, if I said to you, what, how would you say or see this goal fully implemented? What, what, would, what would that student look like who's, who's graduating from Needham High School uh, if this goal uh, around social-emotional learning is fully implemented? What are the characteristics of that young person? I think we would see a student who is, um, <clears throat> feels good about themselves, has, has a good positive self-image, knows how to work with other um, students and, and people in their life, uh, can, can uh, be productive uh, with, with, with other people. I, I think they would know how to manage themselves in, in, a, in a way so that, that they uh, can learn and, and can have relationships and, and can be productive, happy citizens. And, and mostly when we ask parents what they want the kids to, to leave us with is so that they can be happy, confident adults. And, and I think that that's 
that's what it's all about. I think the, the competent piece uh, gets to the learning piece, which is which is uh, which is critical. So I, as I hear this, that when we think about social emotional learning and, and this particular goal for the Needham Public Schools, that uh, we see it as improving skills um, and therefore improving learning for all all young people, and we see it as a uh, uh, enhances the protective factors for young people to to keep them safe and help them make good decisions. The other component of this, the other piece is very important, particularly based on what you just said. These are 21st century skills. These aren't skills that are going to go away. These are, these are skills and components that we want young people to have, from collaborating to one another, uh, being patient with one another, ha uh, having resilient uh, skills so that they can confront issues and, and problems and deal with them effectively. Uh, th those are things that aren't going to go away and that actually are, are really important. Uh, the district, therefore, within this goal, uh, has has really set a very ambitious agenda and developed a few objectives uh, that I would just like to, to briefly uh, take us through. And it is through these objectives that uh, we we hope that the, the work of goal goal two will will really happen. I, I will add, and it's important for the community to understand that this is not something that happens in one year or even two years or three years. This is a sustained effort. All of our goals that will take time. Uh, when you're working with the culture and practices, that's not something that happens overnight, at least not successfully uh, in, 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 in my view. Uh, so there, there are four objectives. Uh, the first objective under goal two is, to, uh, is for meaning, meaningful adult connections, and that is to have all students will have a meaningful connection to an adult in the school system. I think we've talked about that this, this morning. Uh, objective two is strong school culture. And, and strong school cultures will promote a sense of participation, safety, and security for all students. Objective three is parent partnerships. There's no question that we can't do this work by ourselves. We need to engage parents and, and as partners with us and to assist us, to collaborate with us. Schools will partner with parents to provide consistent social and emotional experiences for students. And then as, as, as George uh, and, and Angie talked about uh, skill instruction. Students will improve social and emotional skill uh, development through consistent, layered, and effective instruction at, at all levels. And I, I would emphasize the, the consistent piece, that there's, there's no question that uh, as, as we look at the district, there has been a significant emphasis on social and emotional learning, uh, pre-K through five, and, and pre-K through uh, 12, really, but there's, we're, we're now ready to take it to the next layer, to make it consistent, make it part of the structure, part of the routine even, for all students pre-K through 12 in the need of public schools. Uh, this is a lot of work. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we'll be able to engage our, our staff and parents and students, uh, most importantly, to, to make this effective. Um, and uh, I, think, I think we can do that. I think there are a lot of people uh, from uh, our teachers in the classroom, Angie is a, is a perfect example to our administrators in the building who are committed to this. And uh, so we look forward to the, the work ahead. Thank you very much for joining me this morning, and I look forward to uh, hearing how this unfolds for the Needham Public Schools and the Needham students.